All right. Welcome to our guest speaker this morning. Please give a hand to Mr. Glenn Tarbett. Of course, as you know, this is my son, one of the best-looking young men of his generation. Don't listen to him. Okay, I will let him introduce what he is going to be talking about. First of all, purple's got to go. Okay. So, um, do you guys remember Mr. Tarbett, the music teacher? That's my little brother. Weird math, right? <laughs> He's looking at me funny. So, I went a totally different direction. My dad and brother both are teachers. I am an installation and logistics manager for a construction company. And what I do is I, I'm just gonna draw two circles, okay? This is China, and this is us, U.S. So, I ship stuff from China to the United States, and I do apartment complexes all over the place in the U.S. I fly all over and organize these apartment complexes. So, in the apartment complex, all of the apartments have cabinets and countertops. Who here lives in an apartment complex? Anybody? All houses? Have you been in an apartment complex before? Yeah? So they're all packed in tight together, right? So I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm just gonna use this grid to represent an apartment complex. So when we put in an order, all of this stuff on the floor plan, say it's, say this building's a square. None of them are, because they always want them to be interesting. But in this square, there's hundreds of apartments. And they all need cabinets and countertops for the kitchen and the bathroom and everything else. So. Has anybody seen something like this put together? Like an Ikea? So you buy a box and it's about this big. Well, inside that box is a cabinet. And we order thousands and thousands of cabinets because each one of these little apartments gets about 16 cabinets on average. So, all, who's good at math? Okay, so about how many cubes are in that one big cube? 100. 60. So imagine... 1, 2, 5. 1, 2, 5. Imagine five of these, and they're all over the place. Like. If this building were an apartment complex, there's another one across the parking lot, and all of these are different shapes. They're, they're hardly ever a cube. Just like your own house. Um, in your kitchen, all of the cabinets are different. Say, there's one right next to the fridge. Actually, the way you've draw, drawn that, it's 100 apartments, not 125. So you've got a cabinet next to the fridge, maybe even a pantry, okay? And then you've got um, another upper cabinet that's got your mac and cheese in it. And all of these base cabinets. So the base cabinet is where you put your dishes and a lot of the time it has a drawer. And then you've got your dishwasher or your stove, and above it is your microwave, right? So you've got your cabinets up above here, and another cabinet next to it. So each of these cabinets 
comes in a flat box and our assemblers have to put them together. And we have to know where each of these go on the layout. The big, the big problem is since all of these are different size cubes or different size apartments is that not all of the cabinets are the same and not all of them get the same kind or the same number of any of these cabinets. So what I do is I get on my computer and I literally take each one of these cabinets that's represented by a shape on the computer and tell China how to put it on stacks. So that when it gets here, the guys unloading the trucks, it, co it comes on a 40 foot container and it's just a semi-trailer basically. Every time one of those trucks comes in, there will be 38 apartments in this truck. And they pull it out and put it, say, the first one to go in, one of this, these apartment types is an A1. And the architects will label these apartments by what type they are. And some of them are for handicap. Like uh, the cabinets are shorter and they're shallower so that someone can get in underneath them with a wheelchair. And so all of these will be a different kind. And sometimes there's a repeat, like this one's an A1 as well. And all of that is kind of confusing because for one thing, we put them in the building with a big forklift. Throw it away. Could be a new one. With a big forklift from the outside. So we take it out of these trucks on the forklift and put it in the building through the window. So with them all the way built, just like these, these came flat. Somebody had to go and put them together. And you see how it's stapled together on these? On ours, it's all screws and wooden dowels. I should be taking that apart. I wanted to show you. So I've got to organize each one of these pallets. So on a pallet, it. Where do I grab a new one? Any of the others off the tray there? That's doing okay for a second. So on each of these pallets, I'll actually put all of, all of these cabinets and there will be a stack like this. <laughs> Trying to do this from the side. There will be a big stack and some of them are this tall, literally, and weigh as much as a car. So the hard part is knowing where to put that and do it the right way the first time. So today as part of your raft, you're writing a story from the building to the boats that bring it from China. I went to China to teach our factory guys how to put them in a stack like this and then how to put all of these stacks in the container. One of the problems is that when they're building these buildings, they finish it from the top down. And that's because they put their roof in and they come in and they hang sheetrock and paint it and everything else. And once the paint's done, then we come in and we put the cabinets in. So they'll start here and they have an order in which everything's supposed to go in. And part of my job is to organize these in the container in the order that it goes in. So that when it comes out, it goes into the parking garage and then they'll have, they'll have a big old parking garage wrapping around this apartments. And so we'll put, I'll literally organize them all on the floor next to where they go so they can wheel them in easy and make all of this a short process. 
So today the raft is from the building to the boats. So I, w I went over there and if, well, say this is Hong Kong. We land in Hong Kong and our office is there and that's where my friends work. And we discussed all of this and I talked to them every night. They get up when it's four o'clock here is when they're waking up. Which is kind of funny because as, when I'm done working is when they start. They're almost a day ahead of us. And I went there and talked to them and then we flew clear up here to our factory and from the factory they they do all of this load plan and send it to the coast and then from the coast it comes across the ocean and lands in California and from California it gets shipped all over the country sometimes it'll hit up north even and go to Seattle but all across the West Coast. Do you guys have any questions so far? Or is this way boring? No questions? No input? No. Okay. So, the question is how it gets here, or get, gets to, say, here from the coast. Any guesses? Big trucks is one. How else? Maybe they ship it like Sometimes we do from a plane from the coast, but the plane to ship it is really expensive. Like I said, just one of these weighs as much as a car. So these containers, like I said, look uh, look like a semi truck trailer, and they have a big big door on the back, and I unload it out the back. the The semi trailers are a shipping container box, and on these boats, they'll have I don't know, probably hundreds of these shipping containers all stacked up to where they look like this, but on the boat. And each one of these on the boat is a semi-trailer. Have you guys seen pictures of that before? That's something to look at as part of your raft, probably. But um, we stack all of these and when it gets here, sometimes what they do is they'll take all of these stacks of containers and some of them are full of Legos. Some of them are full of chips. Some are full, full of clothes. We ship stuff back and forth all the time. We sell stuff to them, they sell stuff to us. And at the coast, they literally pick up one of these big semi-trailers and put it on trains. And the train is most often what, what takes it clear across the US over to where I'm at. And I'll fly out and help the guys who are putting it in unload it. <coughs> So, I have a computer program that tells me what each of these needs, and then I decide how it's stacked so that it takes up the least amount of space inside the container. Now, what, what they were doing before is they were taking all of these cabinets, and they would, at the factory, just pick one up, walk in, and set it down inside the trailer. How do you get those out? Teamwork. But there's a problem. How many people would it take to unload a whole semi truck? Hundreds. You'd think. It takes about 15 people all day to unload them that way. Because you have to walk into the trailer, grab one, and they weigh as much as you do. These, just one cabinet weighs as much as you do, and then walk it outside the trailer. So what I did with these is, like I said, it'll have 16 of these cabinets that weigh as much as you do. That's why it weighs as much as a car. 
and they'll drive into the trailer with a forklift and take it out. Or, or they'll, they'll put it into the container in China in the order that I ask for on the computer. I was going to show you guys the computer program. Anybody know how to play Tetris? Sort of? It's a whole lot like Tetris on the computer program. Bright colors and everything's a different shape and a different size and I've got to figure out how to put it on there. Since some of these are smaller, this box is way different from this box. And when it goes on this pallet, sometimes they hang off the side or they're too small and the whole thing sits funny and the top is sloped so you can't put another stack on top of it. So what my job is to make sure that it sits flat and you can put another one on top of it. So be thinking of what the building would say to these boats. How long do you think it takes for these boats to get here from China? Yep. Ours typically take a whole month to come from the coast to coast. So it takes another month to build the cabinets. So we've got to know that this building will be ready. If it's ready in July, when would we have to order at least? It takes 90 days from the time we order for us to get it. So if I ordered it in for this building to be ready in July, when would I have to order it? Which would be... What month? April. So I would have to order these in April. So right now we've got a bunch of buildings that they want done in July because school starts in August. And they want all these kids to be able to move into these apartment complexes. So in April, we'll order probably 10 of these jobs. Like I said, this is one building, and on each of these jobs there's 10 buildings. And we've got 10 jobs, so you can imagine how many of these apartments there are. And then each one of these is a family. So what kind of things would the building want to know or say to the boats? Because that's really important that they have all their kids in in time to go to school. So be thinking about that as part of your raft, but that's what I do. You guys have any questions? China? Yeah. There's a guy like me, a lot, who's over here saying, we want a whole container full of those toys, and this is how you should pack them, and please send them to here. So the reason why you see so much stuff made in China is because we ask them to make a lot of stuff. They have so many people that, that they can team up. They do teamwork very well there. And they make this stuff really fast and in efficient factories and then ship it to us. Have there ever been a time that the shipping took longer and then you went to get it down by the deadline? Yes. Um, we had one time where a monsoon, which is kind of like a hurricane, hit really bad at one of our factories. And it flooded this high of water inside the factory, all the way up to the whiteboard. And we had all of these stacks of cabinets, and all of these cabinets got wet. And you can imagine, and it ruined a lot of cabinets. And so it was little Yeah, it, and it, it ruined it. So they had to hurry and try to make new ones, and then ship it fast, and it didn't go very fast because they were still dealing with all of the damage in the factory. So that was bad. 
Um, we don't often have problems with the boats, but one of the problems we do have is that when it gets to the coast, customs, which allows stuff into the country, has to inspect it. And we had one, before I started working here, we do the countertops too. And the countertops are made out of stone, but the crates that come in are wood. And the crates weren't treated and were full of fruit flies and bugs. And so when it got to the coast, the customs officers opened up the container to find that it was swarming with flies and sent it back to China where they had to take it out and put it in giant ovens to treat the wood and kill all of the bugs. Oh no. Yeah, which meant that this job here was three months late because it took a month to get here, then they had to ship it back, it took a month to get back, they took two weeks to mess with it, then a month back again. So really it was like three and a half months late for this job. And they had to put it all on hold and some of those kids didn't move into that building which is obviously a disaster. So there's a lot of stuff to figure out. Any other questions? Why is it important to fill the containers as full as possible? Any guesses? Every time we ship one of these, and 40 foot is a, just a little bit longer than this classroom. And you go from this wall to about here. That's how much space you have, is in this rectangle. And in this rectangle, you need to pack as much stuff as you can from floor to ceiling, because that costs $3,500 just to ship it which is as much as a car. A decent used car costs, I mean, that's how much it costs to ship, ship just one. On most of these jobs, we have to ship four. And if I don't pack it very well, then all of a sudden we have to ship five, which is an extra $3,500. And that's why they pay me to do that, because I save us a lot of money packing them in there as tight as possible. And they, they judge that by a certain percentage. If, if the containers can be represented by a square, they were getting 68% efficiency, which means they were filling that square about that much, which meant that a lot of the time they had to have another container. And that was even without the pallets. The pallets take up space. Their big concern with putting them on pallets is that it would take up more space. But then we got this computer program, and we're able to do it to 78, which is another 10%. A lot of the time, the, these kits don't fit stacked. They'll, they'll come up to here, and that's as far as we get. We can't really put another kit above that. What else? Think of anything? How long does it usually take you to pack one container? Um, before, they would get a bunch of college kids, and like I said, they would pick up one box each and walk it in there, and it would take them all day to pack just one. Now what they do is they'll take... So that's 120 man hours. That's a lot. That's a lot of time. And because there were so many people loading the container, they had to stop what they were doing. So they couldn't build more, any more cabinets. They had to stop and load a truck. Um, which is bad because it means that no cabinets are being made for the next job. Now, because it's being put on pallets, each one of these, well, at the factory, they'll stack everything next to each other. And this will be all 
microwave. Microwave cabinets, fridge cabinets, sink cabinets, and so on. And each one of these needs one or two of each of these. So they come by and they take one at a time and put it on the pallets. And that is really fast. And then they shrink wrap it. They kind of saran wrap around the outside and they put plastic bands around it to keep it from all falling apart when the boat does this. And the truck does this and the brakes do this. By the time it gets to us, a lot of the time it was all tipped over. How often do you have to travel to the boat? I fly twice a week. Yeah. Um, the last place I flew was Kansas City. And I fly out there and rent a truck. And then I get in the forklift, which is really fun. Because you feel like you're piloting a giant robot. So that part is awesome. And I, I love these. I stick them in the parking garage. Um, it's not always awesome because not all of the forklifts have windows and doors over them. Sometimes it's just a cage with a seat in it. And a lot of the time I get rained on. I sit on a machine in the rain. That part's not great. But most of this is actually really fun. What kind of skills would you need to be able to do this kind of thing? You have to be good at math. There's so much math. When you guys are in math class and you're like, why? I hate this. Why? I'm never going to use this. Yes, you will. There, there's a really good chance you will use some of this math. For one thing, there's a lot of geometry that goes into that. There's even more inside the building. So if you guys do anything with construction, even interior designers, will have to know a lot of really intense math. Right now we're learning geometry. Yeah? Yeah. That was my favorite. I go home and I do geometry for fun. It sounds weird, but it's because my dad, my brother and I, all get together and we make cool stuff. And if you want to make some really cool stuff, you got to know some math, right? Like those mandalas back there? There's a lot of math that goes into those. You wouldn't believe it. But splitting them into halves and having a perfect circle takes some intricate math. What else do you think you would need for this? Yep. This this building takes sometimes a year to do these projects, and so the building will be waiting for these cabinets for months. Do you know there's a time management and time management? We have weekly meetings about how to manage our time effectively. And we sit there and talk about how can we get this here faster? How can we time this well? What, the other problem with our time management is that when the guys get to the apartment to put all these together and install them, we've got to make sure that the building is ready. So we have meetings with the guys that are in charge of building the building in the first place, making sure that they're going to be ready for our guys or they don't work, which means they don't make money and they don't eat. So there's a lot riding on making sure that all of this happens correctly. They are really heavy. They are really heavy. So you need to do strings. Yeah. You know, hopefully, with all of this organization, putting them in kits, and having them in the truck, it takes a lot less people and a lot less strength. One of the good things about this is that they can get in a forklift, a smaller forklift, lift it, 
and stack it in there, and it only takes two people to put them in stacks and one person on a forklift to put them in. Instead of 15 people. Instead of 15 people all day, it takes an hour to load this. Big time. The, one of the hard things about the teamwork is that I'm talking to people in China who are right now asleep. If I need to talk to them, I have to wait until 4 o'clock when they get up. And vice versa, if they need to talk to me, and we have a texting app, and we text each other from here to China. Hey, what are you doing? When is this job going to get done? And then they have to wait for me to wake up. And, they, and I say, oh, well, they're actually running a month late because we've got so much snow. That's another factor. The teamwork, the time management, all of that is affected by the weather a lot. Definitely the forklift license. Forklift license. So one of the things that we're trying to do with putting these into kits is protect the cabinets from getting munched. Because every time they pick one of those up, there's a risk of dropping it and breaking it. Which means that somebody doesn't have a cabinet over their microwave and can't move in. So um, the forklift license comes into play big time because um, we had one job where the guy was new on the forklift. He stunk at it. He would pull them out of here and we were putting them in other containers on the ground. Yeah, that one's done. We, we were taking them and putting them in different containers. And since he w was terrible on the forklift, and it was one of these big forklifts, too, that the, the tires are this tall. And he tried to put them inside this door and smashed about 10 or 15 of these kits, which meant all of the cabinets on one side were broken. And so we had to hurry and order a bunch from China ahead of time to get them here on time. And he had to build a bunch, and that was probably the most important thing about that particular job. He had the problem solved. Always. Well, part of the reason I fly so much is because we have guys who stink on the forklift. We have guys who are terrible at putting these in correctly. Um, we had one where they weren't lining up the stove with the microwave. And so when you walk in, the microwave's over here and the stove is over here. And we had to fix all of that. I had to get a new crew to come in and fix it. How much factory do you have to manage? That is a great question because 